56 seconds of logos, and three of them are Sony companies that Sony has to remind you are Sony by putting their Sony on it. Movie opens with almost a minute of action that happens toward the end of the movie. Because why would we want any of the story's future events to be a mystery? That's no fun. It's why I include spoilers in every Sins video. Also, incredibly convenient for this story that this guy gets to live in a house in a completely abandoned neighborhood where not even homeless people dare to tread. Yo, kill that already. Money is particularly dickish to the guy disabling the alarm that, if not disabled, will cause them to get arrested. The director said, let's have your character eat an apple at the very beginning of the movie. It'll make us all look more like assholes. Also, who does that? This dude is in the middle of a heist and he's like, need my nutrition while I'm working. Money's burgling skills are on par with Marv and Harry from Home Alone. Peeing or masturbating? After seeing the fluid that hit the floor, I'm gonna say pee, but this dude really enjoys peeing, doesn't he? Also, great job leaving your DNA all over the foyer of this house, asshole. All right, you did it. You successfully robbed these rich people. Now it's time to relax in their house. You earned it. And bye bye, Detroit. Oh, la California. Wait, wait, you, you're going away, Rock? This trio of bandits have robbed several houses together, but this is the first time they've collectively discussed their plans to run away. Unless Alex's dad is also their janitor on top of being their security system provider, there is no reason for him to have a key to all his clients' homes. Old Windows screensaver is expositional enough to be a screensaver, while leaving the desktop image of Alex and his dad visible for the viewer to see. 1837 Buena Vista Street. House is with your dad's security company, I already checked. So one of the robber kids is the son of a guy who works for the security company. So if these people keep knocking over houses that use the same security company, don't the detectives start thinking about employees or family of those employees as the prime suspects? Also, where the f*** is this place? They're in a restaurant where they obviously ordered some food, but it's abandoned enough to talk openly about the house robberies. House is with your dad's security company, I already checked. Not only does this insane blind man have a security monitoring system in this dilapidated neighborhood instead of just bars on his windows and a load of guns, but it so happens to be a security system installed and monitored by Alex's dad's company which is impossibly convenient. About 10 Tades Major Larceny. Unless he's referring to an official in the US military, then I have no idea what Major Larceny is. He may mean Grand Larceny, but there's no way to know. That amount brings a serious cop presence. I'll do an investigation. But all the other robberies you guys have done, they've been like, well, these guys stole less than $10,000 worth of stuff, so we won't need to investigate that too hard. And by the way, isn't it weird these robberies keep coming up just short of $10,000 every time? Ah, f it. let's go catch some people speeding. If we do this right, we never have to do it again. But you have no way of knowing how to do it right, because you don't know if he even has this money in his house at all. The whole plan to commit gra I mean, major larceny is built on a hunch that this man is the kind of weirdo that just keeps very large sums of money in his basement, or between his mattress and box spring, or in a safe behind a busted piece of drywall. I mean, they'll be right, but still. Is there some sort of blurry focus sunset going over this phone? Also, text message plays the pronoun game to set up the next scene that requires little to no setup. Apparently, if you Google someone's address, it won't just show you their house on Google Maps. It will also bring up articles about court cases the homeowner was involved in. Google has certainly gotten creepier over the years. I mean, Google is fantastic and YouTube is the greatest media outlet in history. Also, sure, let's tape in the exact address of the place you're about to rob directly into a search engine. No one will ever make a connection to you, the security company, and the place you're robbing. This story is brought to you by Zoltan Berta the Detroit News Finance Editor, because if it involves money at all, this guy's your man, even if it's a settlement in a fatal car crash case. And if you read the first couple of words of this article, you will realize Mr. Zoltan has never written an article before. Orgy of evidence that this family is broken. Watching cops, numerous large empty beer bottles on the table, chimney smoking, and this guy has swastika tattoos. It's almost insulting there isn't a crack pipe or a body outline lying on the floor somewhere. Alex reads up on the army vet who lost his daughter and got a settlement from it, and is basically the gang's conscience. But he reads this guy's story, and now he's like, f*** him, he probably kidnapped and artificially inseminated the girl who killed his daughter in a creepy basement, so let's rob him. Also, are kids these days just texting each other in all caps now? Or are they just all caps texting because they're trying to match the blunt and aggressive tone of the movie's first 10 minutes? Also, why does she have this phone set to military time? Hey, you know where there is, surf? California. What do you say you and I move there together? Would you like that? Movie tries to make Rocky's thieving into something good so that she can get her sister out of this house. But stealing an army veteran's dead daughter settlement? Geez, maybe this broken home isn't broken enough to make that okay. Also, Rocky's little sister wants to be a surfer because she's also been watching this movie and knows that Rocky wants to move to California. So she says this to give Rocky the perfect setup to say what she apparently already knows. Of course this guy lives in a desolate ghost town neighborhood where he's the only one left. Somehow this neighborhood didn't get turned into a Walmart. Is that a new tattoo? Yeah. I was compelled to get it, because I knew you'd ask me about it, forcing me to explain more of my backstory. Also, that tattoo looks pretty good for just getting it yesterday. No swelling and only slight redness. Impressive. She got so fed up with the crying that she would lock me in the trunk of her car. But there was this, um, a little hole in the trunk, and one time a ladybug flew in, kept me company, made me feel safe. I'm not one to judge someone's got thrown in a trunk experience, but that sounds like bullshit to me. 
The lighting alone would prevent you from even seeing the ladybug, much less get comforted by it. Money was just outside and was unable to see the Rottweiler coming at them. He was also quiet enough until he got to the window to be a jump scare dick. Yeah, that's her guy. You, you mean the guy you said was a shut-in and hasn't left the house in five days according to your surveillance video? How'd you miss him leaving the house? That's kind of f***ed up to have a blind guy, isn't it? Not if he's a military hero and lost his daughter in a car crash, it's not. Lights are out. He must be asleep. Or he's, bl he's blind. Damn it! Beat me to it. There's four locks. You got the other keys? You mean you guys have been casing this place for five days and you don't know that he uses four locks on his front door? I need to give backup keys to the security company. Because no one gives keys to their security company? Movie keeps making me sin this. What's that? We just deployed this in the general direction of the master keypad and it'll kill the alarm. How was this not discussed before you guys left? What about that window? There's no bars on it. Yeah, but why? This guy has four locks on his front door, some of which he doesn't trust the security company with, puts bars on his window, has a bolt on the cellar door, but he's not savvy enough to put bars on one of the windows in his house? Hell, he put a motion sensor here, so he knew there was a chance someone might try this, including a security company he doesn't trust. Apparently the blind guy decided to set his alarm on basically silent, so that it wouldn't wake him up. If his sensor is armed, then opening that window would immediately sound the alarm, not quietly ask you to enter the coat. She must have got it by now. She's fine. Yeah, like you really give a f Why say this right now? Does Money seem like the type of guy who won't do something stupid if you insult him in the middle of a robbery? They all decide to take their shoes off inside, potentially leaving behind evidence that all three of them were in the house. So is this really the plan? They're just gonna snoop around the house and hope they stumble upon a large sum of money that isn't under lock and key inside the house? Just so you know, this hammer will be useful later in the movie. Here it is up close, so you can remember which hammer it is. Grieving father watches, or in this case, listens to home videos of his kid's cliché. And here's a Rick Grimes gun, completing the tour of weapons that will be important later. Done! Money assumes the knockout gas worked within five seconds of him applying it. These kids try to pry the door open this way, instead of just trying to pry the lock off the door. Or just go into the little tool area next to the kitchen, grab a screwdriver, and just unscrew the lock from the door and door frame. Do you have any idea what bringing a gun to a burglar means? Damn, dude, shut the hell up. Stop trying to make it sound like you're the good burglar. Y'all really think just because you jerk off to her Instagram selfies that makes you a Romeo? How did you find out about that? Oh, he's talking to Alex. Carry on. What are you, blind and deaf all of a sudden? He's clearly been deaf up until now, based on how much noise you guys made getting into this house without him waking up. I kind of find it hard to believe that the blind guy doesn't hear Alex's footsteps at any time during this close call in the hallway, or his attempt to get out of the way, or smell him, or notice a change in the atmosphere, or get a feeling in his trick knee. He seems to only be perceptive when it plays into the story's plot. Everybody just happens to be in the place they need to be to figure out how to steal the money. Also, considering the paranoia this guy displays, and how he sensed there was more than one robber here, seems like he'd be a little more cautious about the safe. The manufacturers of this safe are out of business now. I can't remember why. Blind guy is actually keeping thousands of dollars in a safe inside his house. I guess after he won his settlement, the judge handed him a briefcase filled with money, which I assume is how it works in Detroit. <laughs> Who's calling this asshole at 3 a.m. right now? And since when are phone buzzes that loud? Not charging your phone before a heist. Blind guy can't smell the actual people standing right in front of him, but he can smell their shoes. <laughs> the blind man has this girl tied up in the basement, complete with a string that rings a bell to tell him she's moving. But why did the fluorescent lights turn on and off too? Is it for the jump scare? He also allows her to keep an expositional newspaper next to her in a little padded area. Maybe just as a reminder for the terrible thing she did, but more so she can show passers-by who she is. When the blind man was designing his home, he opted for the dim and ominous red lights that don't really provide any practical lighting. This safe, which has up to eight numbers you can fill in, has the exact same code as the money safe. And why does he have another safe down here for the keys, when he could simply have those in the same safe upstairs? Well, when I finally release my kidnapped victim, I want to make sure the keys are down here already. Better get another safe for convenience. These girls don't immediately start running away from the guy with the gun, staying exposed in the only small opening he has for shooting purposes. Convenient abandoned neighborhood continues to be convenient. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you should have thought about this before you started shooting up the cellar. You knew this girl was up because you heard the bell ring, so why did you shoot so indiscriminately? You've been to war, man. You know better. Perfect chance to walk slowly the f*** out of here, wasted. These keys, they nice locks on the front door. I can tell just by looking. And I memorized the way the locks look on the front door. I think I was okay with these guys finding ways to be super silent when the blind man was around, but now I'm floored they survived this running around in the dark basement filled with an obstacle course scene. Rocky! Stupidly saying things out loud, ex machina. What are you waiting for? You don't have another kidnapped girl who killed your daughter down here, do you? Gun's empty, but still a sin. This way, this way. How the f do you know that? You're still in the dark. You just got strangled. How the hell do you know where you are? I see, I see light. But why? First off, didn't the blind guy turn off the breakers? Second off, if he only turned off the breakers for the basement, why did he do that instead of the whole house? Third off, even if he didn't, why is there a light up here? The last time I saw this area, all it had was a red light, which should be off anyway, and no light behind the door. So you're telling me this blind man turned on a light before he went to the cellar door to start shooting people? Don't. Run. 
how did the dog get in here? Did the blind guy leave the doors open for the dog to get in? I'm almost sure he didn't, since the doors are still locked. And I don't think this guy has a doggy door, considering all the security he has in place. And the blind man was in such a panic to kill these fools, I doubt he woke up his dog, unchained him, and put him in the house just in case. I was blocked up too. Did you forget what you guys found out before entering the house? Rocky had to go through the one window that wasn't blocked, remember? Totally and completely astonishing he didn't bring this gun in the first place, when he first thought there might be intruders in this house. The blind man no longer has the blood stains on his shirt that were there when they were in the cellar. I guess he found the time to change shirts when he was down there. We can't go to jail! No, no, we won't. Are you sure about that? Yeah, blind dude kidnapped and killed a woman, but you still broke into his house and tried to steal almost a million dollars. Once again, vents that are big enough for an adult to crawl through to make John McClane proud. Alex survives this to an insane degree where he's only unconscious for a few minutes and has no scars or death afterwards. Also, if the dog was able to push Alex through this window and he wasn't immediately stopped by metal bars, why did he and Rocky think they were trapped in this room when they could have escaped through this window? Alex survives even more this. As I see Alex survive every fall, crash, choking, and head smashing in this movie, I wonder why Charles Xavier never recruited this kid. Even though the blind man killed the power when they were in the cellar, the washing machine can come on because it's on battery backup. You understand nothing. Fane? Cindy took my child away from me. I thought it told me fair that she'd give me a new one. And here's yet another whammy for the movie, introducing us to the wonderful world of this guy artificially inseminating his kidnapped victims to get a new child. Believe me, this makes the movie way better when you find out about Papa Dragon's basement full of jits. Also, this movie officially turns the villain hero thing on its head to justify all the actions we've seen in this movie. These kids who rob people's houses are now forgiven because this guy's even worse than they are. Movie fails to show Alex's backup power supply and computer screen POV that he obviously has built inside him from his time at Skynet. Also, movie expects me to believe that the blind man was able to beat the shit out of Alex like he wasn't blind, but when he goes to kill him, he completely misses and stabs Money's body even though the blind guy was standing right over Alex. Dog finds its way out of the HVAC and the wall, I guess? Because this is actually a video game dog that whenever it gets stuck gets to restart from this spot. Please, God. God. There's no God. I don't know. Have you met Alex? This is exactly what I think it is. I'm not a rapist. I never forced myself on her. Your Honor, all I did was artificially inseminate her while keeping her against her will. So despite the fact that I'm going to jail forever, at least I have my morals. Just this. All of this. Why is there hair in it? Don't answer that. Holding the turkey baster in this way, allowing man seed to drip out. Also, this is not a contest. I don't think you need that much. Nor do you. Now I'm doubting my personal man seed production. Holy sh! now it's almost completely full. What was he doing for that one second? Considering what we know of Alex, this is literally deus ex machina. Just in case the whole semen thing wasn't as distasteful as it could be, we will now stab him with the baster and make him choke on it. The blind man decided to take the bag full of money down to the basement with him after taking it off of Rocky and leaving it in another room in a previous scene because he understood a movie is being made and needed to keep the money conflict going. First off, even if the blind man was able to get out of the basement, he would have had to run to the room where the gun was. And if you recall, he didn't know where that gun was after he threw Alex into the workbench, because he proceeded to use hedge clippers. Second off, I can't believe they're saying Alex is dead here after all the other stuff he survived. Even after being bludgeoned with a metal hammer, assaulted by a jizz baster, and handcuffed to a padded room, this old blind man was able to rush up behind them and shoot Alex before they leave the house. You're worthless out here. Will you just leave the premises, please? Haven't you had enough? A tired and beaten Rocky still manages to outrun this dog. Rocky has an amazing magical bag that disappears at random times, so no one else can steal it if it's filled with money. Not only does Rocky have a magical disappearing bag, she also has magical regenerative pants that can sew themselves back together after getting cut during the attempted insemination. This is clever, but I feel like taking her sister to California and getting a waitressing job is easier than the bull she's going through just to keep the money. Dog continues to go after her face instead of biting literally anywhere else. <laughs> You can go now. You can go now! How many getaway fakeouts have we had in the last five minutes? I count five. Movie shows me the moment it showed me at the beginning of the movie, making me feel like I just wasted the last hour and 20 minutes of my life. Oh, f*** you. F*** you in your face. Of course the remote to turn on the alarm is here, because of course it is, of course. Blind guy doesn't know how to properly disarm his own security system if the siren goes off. Rocky has tremendous trouble leaving a situation when she has the chance. The cops come quickly to a house in the middle of a neighborhood no one knew still existed, and they somehow don't see Rocky running after turning this corner. News playing in the background that's important to the story cliche. This visually impaired man was able to defend himself, shooting and killing both his attackers on the spot. Detectives were baffled at all the jizz in the obvious kidnapping dungeon in his basement, but what a man does with his jizz in a turkey baster and an obvious kidnapping dungeon in his own house is his business. But doctors say he is in stable condition. Death is a stable condition, right? because she's definitely killed him. Movie so aggressively wants to sequel, it allows this blind man to survive all this. This is Papa Dragon. My name is Lester Burnham. This is my neighborhood. 
subliminal, liminal, and superliminal. It was a f keys, man. Give me the fucking keys, you fucking sucker, motherfucker. You understand nothing. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Putting up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted, and burned. 